and aptly known efficient three-point shooter. So not only do they shoot a lot, but they make a lot. So, hey, do what you do best. Beyond the win at Tulane for SMU, they knocked down 15 threes that day. One of the best days in team history. And a step in three for Tulane's Kevin Cross to start things off. And Kevin Cross shot a lot of threes previously when he was at Alabama. Doesn't shoot as much for Tulane, and that's a shot that the Mustangs are going to give him throughout this game. Marcus Weathers. Transfer from Duquesne, well off on his first offering from three. One of the things that the Mustangs are going to have to deal with early is the emotion of the senior game. You want to play this like it's any other game and let your emotions, let the feelings die down and just get out there and play basketball. Sometimes that's tough to do. It is tough to do. As a former player, I can still remember my senior game. That goes out of bounds off of Cross, off the Weathers attempt to get to the bucket. But SMU does have players that have been around for a while. They've got a veteran coach as well in Tim Jankovic. What do you think that Jankovic's message was to the guys on a day like today? I, I think the coaching staff for the Mustangs, to, to, to their credit, have been very on point as far as we're taking one game at a time. And that's allowed the Mustangs to play with that same intensity we've seen throughout this winning stretch that they've had in the latter part of American Athletic Conference play. Weathers has it dribbled away as Jalen Forbes comes up with a steal in Tulane. One of the best teams in the nation when it comes to turnover margin, and they do not turn it over themselves. Absolutely 10.2 turnovers per game. That's top six in the country, number one in the American Athletic Conference. And talking to the coaching staff before the game, they said they're going to lean on their defense. That's what's helped them come out with W's throughout the season. Emmanuel Vandemel, one of these great seniors, hits an early three. Yeah. Emmanuel Vandemel shooting his best three-point percentage as a Mustang. He shoots 62% of his shots from the three-point line. You can't allow him to get comfortable from distance because he will knock down those big shots. It's a great atmosphere in here. For Tulane, do they have to be scared about getting blown out of the gym early? I don't think this is a Tulane basketball team that's scared of anything. Two prolific scores, three if Jalen Cook is on the court, all three in the top three as far as points scored per game and they play with the tenacity the coach Ron Hunter has implemented into them and a lot of confidence is what you're going to see tonight. A lot of three-point balls too. This is Michael Weathers. Michael Weathers is another player who has improved his three-point shooting throughout the season shooting a little under 40 percent from distance and he can do so much for the Mustangs a very dynamic playmaker. Tulane really hung with SMU the first time around the slip down to RJ McGee. Nice play right there, and the green wave is taking what the defense of the Mustangs is giving them. Very patient on that offensive set, waiting for the cut of cross. Good bucket, nice confidence builder early on on the hilltop. In many ways, these two teams kind of know their conference tournament fate. Kristen Clark gets the start today to transfer from Baylor. It's Kendrick Davis. John, you've seen the ball movement, really, that is definitively an SMU trait. They move the ball around, they hit the open shooters. Kendrick Davis waiting on the baseline for an open shot, and when they share the ball like that, SMU very difficult to defend. Devon Baker, a player who's been up and down, battled some turf toe injury, comes through with a D2. Ron Baker's double figures in his last two basketball games, and they're going to need that with Jalen Cook on the sideline. Tristan Clark banging down low, so efficient. John, Tristan Clark is the master of position down low. He does his work early. He creates angles with his body, making it very difficult to defend him in the post area. Forbes, a great shooter. Cross comes out with the offensive rebound. That's one of the things the Green Wave do not do particularly well is offensive rebound. Only get 20% of their offensive possessions as an offensive rebound, and that's bottom six in the country. McGee trying to fire back. SMU off to an outstanding start. And Marcus Weathers into the action.
transition team, SMU needs to take advantage of their speed and ability to score in fast, fast breaks and utilize their multiple playmakers on the court to really put Tulane on their heels defensively. Green wave all time against SMU here in Dallas, just two and 17. And the bad news for them is Moody Magic is back. A stand up three in and out for Jaden Coleman. And here comes SMU again. Slashing in, nice not pass. off. Marcus Weathers can't finish though. Nice pass early on, good ball movement by the Mustangs. Great job by Tulane converging defensively and get a hand to prevent that bucket on the interior. Tulane can shoot it from outside, and that's a way to get back in the ball game. It is. Now, for the Green Wave, pay attention to 25 and 2. Those are two players that the Mustangs want to be there on the catch because they can shoot from anywhere on the court. Kendrick Davis inside the nut all. Michael Weathers again. John, credit Nuttall for potentially two assists in this game. Missed one for Marcus Weathers early on, but his ball movement and facilitation as a scorer has been so important for the Mustangs, the way they move the ball and create an atmosphere where the ball does not stick. SMU cooking offensively. Meanwhile, Tulane is 0 of 4, and they turn it over. That's the Mustangs' prototypical handsy and active hands that really make it difficult to score and get any sort of continuity offensively. Tulane coming with Tylen Pope and Noble Days for the first time. Yeah, for SMU, about midseason, Isaiah J.C. went down to the Achilles injury. He's one of the seniors that they are honoring today. But it also meant SMU went small, and that means the greater activity defensively. Well, John, I actually have an argument with some of the coaching staff for the Mustangs, thinking that for them, it, it has almost been better that J.C. has gone out. Not that I didn't love Isaiah J.C. He's a space eater, but it has forced them to fully embrace that small ball mantra and their ball movement, and they have thrived in that, and no one's more important in their ability to do that in Marcus Weathers in the way that he has played as a big. Jalen Forbes normally does it from outside the arc, but takes it in the paint this time. Averaging a little under 17 points per game, shooting 40% from the three-point line. You have to respect his shot, which allows him to get into the interior. Michael Weathers has a poke down from behind, and, and Tulane does a good job of stealing the basketball. They had 11 steals against SMU in the first matchup. They absolutely do. They have this matchup-type zone that is very difficult to game plan for. The slip inside to Tylen Pope from Sion James and Tulane climbing back in. And the coaching staff is really looking on Sion James to really step his game up with the absence of Jalen Cook. His ability to score, particularly when he goes downhill with the basketball in his hands, is going to be very important for the Green Wave in this game. Marcus Weathers, short corner, kept one foot on the ground, slings baseline for the slam. John always attack the poor closeout. Two poor closeouts on Marcus Weathers. They bit on the pump fake, and then they became a poster. Marcus Weathers has poster after poster this year. This leaner does not fall for Forbes. He thought there was contact. Tulane has been a little bit impatient offensively, not waiting for a good shot and taking some forces. Coleman forces that one into a deuce, plus the foul as well as he banks it in. Jaden Coleman. Jaden Coleman has really been playing well for the Green Wave the last four games. He has the ability to shoot from anywhere on the court, and you have to respect his jump shot. And that position, possession went to his right, felt the contact, played through it for a nice shot off the glass for an N1 scoring opportunity. SMU. All time really leading this series, and SMU in New Orleans back in January, picked up a really tough win. Mustangs, of course, have won 17 straight home games. Now the fourth longest home winning streak in team history. They're 15-0 this year. This is such a tough place to play now. They have the sixth winning long streak in the NCAA. They have really turned Moody Magic into a place where opposing teams do not want to travel to. And it's because of that guy right there, I think. Kendrick Davis swirling one home. Change of speed. Andrew Davis is able to utilize multiple speeds to get you off balance and so quick that whenever he turns the corner, he can get to the rim with ease. Forbes forcing his way down low. And they're going to need a lot more of that from Jalen Forbes, who, as I mentioned earlier, can shoot from the outside, but he's had eight consecutive games in double figures, and they're going to need a big one for him on the hilltop. Coming into the weekend, SMU, part of Joe Lenardi's first four out. They're looking to play their way into the tournament. 
here at home and also in the conference tournament in Fort Worth next week. And John, as we were discussing before the game with Memphis win against Houston, that puts this game here against Tulane as a must win. And they're going to have work to do. They're going to have to win two games in, in a potential semifinal matchup in the American Athletic Conference. They are going to have throughout the season. But uh, I know that's going to be a great matchup. And the reason why they're going to have to defeat Memphis is the selection committee most likely is not going to put three at-large teams from the American. The, the American is rated as the seventh conference in the country. And just the strength of the teams, the strength of the schedules, not going to allow that. So you got to take the decision out of the selection committee's hands. Yeah, if you're looking at it from SMU's perspective, there's no doubt. Tim Jankovic, though, says, you know, for the American, he said, why not three teams? You know, that's something that he is continuing to, you know, champion here at the end of the season. This is a really good, tough league. Absolutely, because you look at Memphis, they beat Alabama, they beat Virginia Tech, Houston twice, Wichita State, which is the seventh team in the American. They beat Oklahoma State. SMU, you know the wins that they've had throughout this season, defeating very good teams as well. Houston, Memphis. Oh, yeah, I, I think the American is almost mislabeled, and they're a, a, a power six conference, and they played like it. This is up, one of those things that's up to the selection committee. Or you even look at the depth of this conference right now. You got seven teams in the top 100 in net, including Tulane, which I think really surprised people this year. They were picked ninth. Right now, they're going to finish fourth or fifth, which is a huge surprise and big credit to Ron Hunter. Yeah, this is definitely not your dad's Tulane green way. They are playing with confidence offensively. And again, with that matchup zone that they have that is difficult to game plan for, really puts opposing offenses on their heels. And with Davis also difficult to game plan for. Coleman misses to Dorovich in to claim the rebound, and here comes SMU. I love the fact that Jaden Coleman is not selling for the jump shot and is putting pressure on the rim. Tulane, after settling on some outside shots early, they have been taking it inside. This is a three, and Jalen Forbes, very capable. Forbes, the 73rd this year. Jalen Forbes taking advantage of the youth of Stefan Todorovic. Look, the, co the, the coaching staff ad nauseum told the players, you have to run Forbes off the line. You cannot allow him to set up past the three-point line. Nice pass. Wow. Aganane, reverse pivot, keeps it alive. Can't chase it down to the corner. The interior is an area that Tulane's defense is suspect, so I like the probing of that defense of SMU trying to attack the rim. And here's Forbes coming down, has Todorovic on his heels. Look, that's a situation you got to run him off the line, force him into the teeth of your defense. You got help. Jalen Forbes, too good for the three-point line to allow him to get a rhythm three. Now, 40% this season, second best in the conference among those who qualify. And as a team, 37% best in the league. Pull up for Devon Baker. Great score when he was at UNC Asheville. And like you said, he's playing well here at the end of the season. Yeah, Baker's a player who averaged 13 points per game for Asheville. So he does have it in his game to score multiple buckets and manufacture points. And they're going to need that from him today on the hilltop. Todorovic hungry, but unable to hit. Yeah, I don't like that shot for Todorovic. Make the ball move a little bit more. Get some ball reversals in. Make that matchup zone move and then attack the seams. SMU led by 13 early. Nuttall got his hand in on Cole. Baker unable to finish. The follow slam doesn't go for Forbes, but he's fouled. I love the attack offensive mindedness of the Green Wave in this game. They're being patient. They're allowing the cutters to attack the rim as you see Devin Baker attack the rim. Nice pass there by Noble Days. And when they get it, they are going up strong offensive physical mindset you have to have on the road. Seven already for Jalen Forbes, averaging nearly 17. And his team is better when he's not just shooting three-pointers, when he's getting to the line like this. And Coach Hunter says the game's really slowed down for Jalen Forbes in his second year at Tulane after transferring in from Alabama. Yeah, a lot of times when you have players that go to high major schools like Alabama and then they come to another school, they have that experience. They know 
the feeling in what's expected to be successful in those high games and they're able to play their game as you see Tulane putting a little full court pressure on the Mustangs. Already got a 7-0 run. Kendrick Davis getting a rest here. Zach Nuttall can't hit on the three. He's been cold as of late. Two of 20 from three over his last six games. And you look at the last two games, he's 0 for 7 for the three-point line, now 0 for 8. And I, I just feel like Zach Nuttall is due for a big game. And if he were to get hot in the American Athletic Conference or in the tournament, wherever they go, it's going to be a huge bonus for the Mustang. A tying bucket by Noble Days, and Tulane has climbed the mountain. They were down by 13. And again, that's what I say. you got Coach Ron Hunter allowing this team to play with a lot of confidence and they know they are never out of the game with their ability to score and the disruption that their matchup zone causes and it's the offense that's come alive and this was one of the poorer offenses in the american last year but coach hunter has made this the leading scoring team in the league almost 74 points a game and they're doing it without the three-point shot smu leads the american athletic conference with 8.63 per game Tulane is second with 8.4, but they are dominating on the interior, 9 for 20, only with only one three-point make thus far. Michael Weathers gets it stripped away by Tylen Pope. Weathers needs to kick that out. He had three Tulane green jerseys around him. You've got to recognize that, be aware, kick it to your wide-open personnel. 9-0 lead, Tulane trying to build. Sion James, they call him Hercules. And a dunk. Well, they've got it done defensively, and they've got stops on the other end and they have translated that in a transition in their continuity offense and then once they've gotten onto the offensive side of the court they've been patient and allowed their sets to execute for themselves and created easy buckets that way and, and the Mustangs really going to have to pick up their defensive intensity for this last eight minutes of the first half. Kendrick Davis is back in. Mandamel cut off with eight to shoot. And John, that's the other thing they did is they allowed Kenny Davis to be on the bench. So that, that helps. Michael Weathers can't quite roll it in, but a couple free throws coming up for the transfer from Texas Southern as Forbes is whistled for the foul. Michael Weathers, one of the more dynamic players on the Mustangs, has the ability to create his own shots, and whenever he gets on the interior, has the athletic ability and the physicality to play through contact as you saw in that last possession. How have you seen him settle in as the season's going on? Well, I, I think one thing that I love about Michael Weathers is he is a wild card. Mm. You don't know what you're going to get from him. I mean, he's top six in blocks per game, top 13 in rebounds per game, top eight in steals per game, top eight in assists per game. And so regardless of what type of scenario, he doesn't have to necessarily score. He can put his imprint defensively with steals and blocks and rebounds. Offensively is facilitation. And that's a much needed component for this basketball team that, you know, he adds. And it's really difficult to, to game plan for multiple playmakers when you have Kendrick Davis and a guy like Michael Weber. And he's just a tough guy, too. Absolutely. He and his brother Marcus have both brought that toughness to Dallas. Eight to shoot for Tulane, deep three by Coleman. My goodness, knocking the bottom out of the thing. And John, that's what I told you about Coleman, is regardless of where he is on the court, as long as he has his feet set and his shoulders square, he has the green light to shoot shots, and I've seen him make those type of shots throughout this entire American Athletic Conference season. Run is 14 to one. Coaching staff wants all the players to know where Coleman and Forbes are at all times. And as you can see, once he gets hot, it is very difficult to offend, to defend a, a dynamic player like Jaden Coleman. Coleman just absolutely on fire early on. And he crowds up Davis here. And KD does not like that. KD was smart. All, all players understand when you know you, you got to know when to square up and to you know get your tough guy on and the best time to do that is when you have your teammate around you who will grab you before anything can happen it was an outstanding start for this smu team they were up 17 to 4 early see kendrick davis goes under 
creates that contact, gets a little grab by Coleman on his jersey, which could be a technical foul. They do not allow that. Coleman got lucky that officials missed that call. See if it lights a fire under SMU a bit. Marcus Weathers just in a pile trying to go up. He's headed to the line. Deion James on the foul. John Marcus Weathers has grown man strength. You see him tussling for the basketball. Three jerseys around him, but grown man don't matter. Marcus Weathers going up strong through contact on the last possession. So Marcus Weathers and Michael Weathers, the twins, one of seven sets of twins on D1 teams this year. There can't be any as impactful as these guys have been. No, and I, I think the most impactful player for the Mustangs this year are the parents of the Weathers. Because as we know, they're a package deal. And without Marcus Weathers, with the loss of Isaiah JC, Mustangs would be dead out of the water. And with both of the package between Marcus and Michael, you got top 10 in almost every statistical category between the two. Coleman, a 30-footer. Come on now, if that went. Oh, I've seen him make that. Uh, that is well within his range, and Coach Ron Hunter gives him the green light. You're going to see him take shots like that throughout the game. A great base creator for the toe for Tulane. Smith, extra pass, Davis. John, good teams pass up good shots for great shots. As you saw, Jalen Smith, nice ball reversal hitting Kendrick Davis wide open. The opposite end of the court for a three-pointer. And really gets a crowd into it here as well. SMU unbeaten at home. Coleman forcing it up. Oh. My goodness, I don't know. I don't even know. And, and that was a difficult shot. That wasn't the type of shot that you normally see Jaden Coleman take. He was drifting, floating in the air, had a little contact. This one's eating up. Flashing. Michael Weathers able to play through that contact. Michael Weathers, who started his career all the way back at Miami of Ohio with his brother Marcus under John Cooper, the assistant coach at SMU. They wanted to play one more year together, and what a year it has been. Jaden Coleman is a player that you're just going to have to face guard wherever he is down the court and not allow him to get any space. Coleman leaning he just did. into it. My goodness, they call it a two. He's got 13 already. And I love the progression of Jaden Coleman's game. This is a guy that last season averaged 2.6 points per game. And here he is in the first half against the second ranked team in the American Conference with 14 points. This has been a wide open first half. A lot of fun. Teams trading blows. Gian James cut off. As a player, you have to embrace the moment and be ready for your opportunity. Curry stop. Best team in the American, the way Tulane has, and that's because of that prolific scoring that they have in the matchup zone that they've progressed with throughout the season. Early on, defensively, they weren't the same team that they are now. But great job by Coach Ron Hunter. Incredible. Maybe Coach of the Year type job by Ron Hunter this year in the American. It absolutely is. But you can never forget Houston with Kelvin Sampson losing Sasser, their leading scorer at that point. For the entire season, so you got to give a nod to him because while they were ranked as the top team in Houston, I think a lot of that had to do with the way that they progressed throughout the tournament last year. But yeah, their ability to fight through adversity with Houston is really doing something else throughout the season. Yeah, Houston, the conference champ in the regular season. They did lose to Memphis today. And SMU needs to win today to avoid slipping to three. But in the conference tournament, two, three, doesn't matter a lot. It's just matchups. Your path is basically the same. Here's Vandemel out to Davis. Only five to shoot. Davis attacks, and he's fouled. Tyler Pope thinks he might have gotten all ball coming through there. 
One of the things you have to do against a matchup zone is you have to penetrate, force the defense to react, can't just pass it on the perimeter. And Kendrick Davis does just that, sees a little sliver, able to use his quick burst of speed to get inside and initiate contact. Kendrick Davis, nobody takes more free throws than him in this league, and he's 11th best in the nation in free throws made this year, coming in with 157. Rare miss for a guy who's second all-time in SMU history in free throw shooting, and there you see the conference standings. Tulane's either going to finish fourth or fifth. Temple and UCF are still in the running for that fifth spot, that fifth first-round bomb. As you see Memphis with 13 wins, so SMU needs to get this win today in order to stay in that second spot. Only two to shoot it, and Baker finds a soft spot. Love the patience of Tulane on the offensive side of the court. They are letting their sets progress, waiting for a gap in the Mustangs' defense, and they're taking advantage of them. Tulane threatening to grab a double-digit lead here. Fade away by Baker, and he fills it up. And, John, what's important to note about Tulane is even though they don't have any interior presence, the fact that you have so many shooters that you have to respect create space, allowing the penetration of their guards to get inside of the painted area. Jalen Smith ready to shoot off the bench. I mean, you said it right there, partner. Jalen Smith has not had a lot of plays the last three games and 0 for 3 from the three-point line the last eight games. So huge confidence builder for Jalen Smith. Baker feeling it. Pope is called for the loose ball foul. Thunder two to play. The second on Tylen Polk. Minute 50 left for SMU to create some momentum going into halftime and cut into this lead by Tulane. Both teams playing well down the stretch, but Tulane able to dictate the pace and the style of play throughout this first half with their matchup zone and then their transition offense, something that they really haven't been good, great with throughout the season, but eight fast break points for Tulane, and that's been their average the last four games. 17-game home winning streak on the line for SMU, and more than that, they are right on that bubble as an at-large team for the NCAA tournament. Can't afford to drop any of these. Here's Vandemel, rocking it to the rim, leaving it long. Vandemel actually shoots better from the three-point line than he does inside of the painted area. At times when he penetrates gets a little bit too excited but those are the type of plays you need with a turnover a rare turnover by the green wave on that last possession some emotion from ron hunter for sure and he brings cross out yeah only the third turnover of the first half and for the season as you mentioned we talked about it earlier the green wave only averaging about 10 turnovers per game davis turns the corner Time, situation, and score. Kendrick Davis, games has definitely slowed down for him, gets into the interior, makes the defense bite on the pump fake, and then knowing your teammates, Marcus Weather knows what Kendrick Davis is about to be, cuts to the rim, gets a nice dime and a big bucket down the stretch. Throwing it into traffic, James turns it over. And this is where the Mustangs are dangerous in transition. Davis forcing the issue, no call either way. Contact under the rim, normally that's a call. Surprised officials didn't make the call on that possession. And here Smith is called for the foul on Forbes. The sixth on SMU. Kendrick Davis, the game slows down, he goes up, actually gets the ball deflected to Marcus Weathers. And Marcus Weathers with that grown man strength goes up through contact. And the message afterwards. That guy's not going to go quietly today. No, he is. He absolutely is not. The heart and soul of the Mustangs. He comes with the grit and intensity every game. I tell you, that drop step dunk against Cincinnati late. Oh my goodness, to put the game away. That was one of the plays of the year for SMU earlier this week. Tulane going to wait for the last shot. Forbes to find to shoot it. He forces the issue, 
and it is going to be a charge. Yes, Nuttall takes it. You know, Zach Nuttall has had struggles offensively, but one thing he has not struggled with is all of those team statistics. And here he is playing that team defense, coming over, knowing Jalen Forbes is going to go all the way to the rim, getting his feet set, taking the charge. Huge play for the Mustangs down the stretch to again get some much needed momentum going into half. Shows the buy in of the Southland Conference Player of the Year for Sam Houston a year ago. A big friend of Kendrick Davis from their AAU days. And now Davis at the end of the half slips it to Vandemel. Extra pass, not all, and he travels. Picked up his pivot foot on the rocker step. It's two lane, a little time, 5.7. Mustangs are going to need to come up with a Big stop right now, but a great opportunity for Tulane to put an exclamation point on a very well executed first half on the road versus the Mustangs. Watch number two, Jaden Coleman came back in. He's got 16 in the first half. And two fouls. Baker oh! to the butt in Devon Baker. And Baker's playing his best ball here at the end of the year. Nine in the first. And frankly, just trying to play spoiler. Again, SMU has won 15 at home this year, 17 in a row at home. And Kendrick Davis does not start the second half for SMU. Quite a development. See how SMU is able to withstand that. Is. Emmanuel Vandermelt sidesteps for three and comes up short, but there's Marcus Weathers. Marcus Weathers has played huge for the Mustangs all season long. Kendrick Davis wasn't even on the bench at the start of the first half. And he walks right to the scoring table with a huge sigh of relief from the crowd here at Moody Coliseum. Michael Weathers reaches in. We'll see if this is a shooting foul or not as Jalen Forbes forces SMU into a foul. It's the first on Michael Weathers. It's back and forth game the first time the two teams met in New Orleans. I mean, Tulane really gave SMU everything they had. In the end, it was the 15 threes made by SMU that helped him win it. And SMU already has eight threes in this one. Well, again, this is a very good Tulane basketball team with three players when healthy that are in the top 10 in scoring in the American. And that amoeba matchup zone like defense that frustrates opponents. And as you see here against SMU, the Tulane plays with a lot of confidence, and when they get hot from the three-point line, opens up the court, opens up the floor, and allows them to attack the rim. Uh, Jalen Forbes at the line, normally really good, and here comes Kendrick Davis as Nuttall sits down. Forbes makes it a six-point lead. Forbes averaging almost 17 a game, fourth best in the conference. We'll see what Kendrick Davis has in the second half. There's a bandage over his left eyelid, or eyebrow, I should say. Vandemel, open for three. And John Emmanuel Vandemel has improved as a basketball player every season in, in his last season as a Mustang, shooting the best three-point percentage as he has for his entire career at 38%. And, he has a very extreme confidence in the three-point line. Forbes almost stole a pass that was intended for the corner and is able to lay it home. Tulane by five again. You have to stop Forbes from getting ahead of steam. Once he's able to turn that corner, attack the rim, with his, with his athletic ability and his ability to elevate and shoot over the defense, very difficult for the Mustangs to stop. Weathers had a good first half, but a little bit long on this take to the rim. shooting 51 percent in the opening half. Zion James grinding in on Marcus Weathers, forcing it up. Man, that is just the strength of Weathers. Strength on strength on that last one. Come on! Big time alley -oop. That's Mustang basketball. Get the defensive rebound, get this defensive stop, get out in transition, lob it up for your playmakers. Manuel Vandemel does Cross. the rest. Oh, excuse me, Kevin Cross gets fouled underneath. This is a thing of beauty. Michael Weathers throwing up to Manuel Vandemel, who went.
almost all the way back to Canada to get that basketball elevates catches it against the glass and there's not a higher degree lob that you can throw and catch for Sunday than that that was that was a lot of extraness on that play I thought it was out of his reach for sure Coleman got an extra step and the officials know it you notice against Jaden Coleman in this second half they are face guarding him and really trying to prevent him from getting any clear sights to the rim and that's what you're going to have to do for a player who's already in in the zone in his mind crowd into it outstanding crowd here on this Sunday Davis drives has it flicked out good play by Pope to get his hands on it a little bit of an over penetration by Kendrick Davis on that possession keep your dribble alive pull it out set the set it up Tulane's doing a good job of being long on the interior and preventing a lot of those cross court passes Vandermel blocked that shot Michael Weathers probing has his own and scores John is not always about the first attempt a lot of times in basketball it's who has the quickest second jump and Michael Weathers with his athleticism and ability to quick pogo step to get that second chance scoring opportunity created another offensive chance for the Mustangs Cross was looking for the silencer Tulane is incensed that this call is going toward the SMU side Take a look at this. Kind of tough to see there. Yeah. The SMU gets the benefit of the call and a chance to take the advantage. Here's Bandamel. He's been big in the second half. Driving on. Senior day, John, look to your senior for that leadership. Manuel Bandemel in the second half. Ten points now, but Mustangs with four players already, double figures. It's going to take that type of a night. Well, if you're SMU, your destiny's in your hand. And it's not like you have to wait for other people to lose or someone else to win. And Great point. all they need to do is protect home court here against Tulane. And then once the conference championship starts, at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, they got to just come up with some W's, and they need, in my mind, at least two. That second one against Memphis if they meet up. Jaden Coleman tried to swipe it out of the hands of Bandamel. So what you're saying is, win that quarterfinal game, and that would be the first one that SMU plays. Right. Get to the game against Memphis, most likely, and if you win that one, get to the championship. No matter what happens against Houston, you're feeling good about SMU's chances. Yeah, if they beat Memphis three times and where Memphis right now is the last four in that I feel like will give them enough to put them ahead of Memphis because like I said they're not going to give three at large bids to the American are are really even three bids so you're going to have to do your work and again take the choices out of the selection committee as we told you earlier in the game Tim Jankovic thinks there should be three teams get in from the American but it may not be one of Eaton's years here comes Vandemel downhill. Knocked out by Baker. SMU has started the second half five of seven, and Emmanuel Vandemel has really been one of the ones who's gotten it started with his hustle, his intensity, and Tim Jankovic just loves the man that Emmanuel Vandemel is. Well, Vandemel has fueled the 6-0 run that they've had over the last three minutes, making five of their last seven field goals, and that's allowed them to get a one-point lead in this early second half and they're going to need to continue with that attacking style offense along with the frustrating defense that they've been implementing against two lanes and now has seven of the 11. here's davis and he started so well and foul on the floor as davis snapped off his pins on that See, baseline James. very tricky situation with the lack of height by kendrick davis he's getting into some tough situations sometimes he needs to pull it out move the basketball through the pass, not necessarily with the dribble. 
Denver Davis, who didn't start the second half because of that little high contusion. Michael Weathers, three, wide open as it was, off the mark. Greenway, fourth in scoring in the league, almost 74 points a game, and Nuttall is called for contact on R.J. McGee up top. The dribble weave that Tulane utilizes really puts the pressure on the defense to make a determination. Are you going to switch? Or are you going to stay with your man? And you never know if the offensive player for Tulane is going to have the ability to turn the corner and attack the rim. But I like the sharing of the basketball that Tulane is having down the stretch in the second half. Baker with eight to shoot. Forces up to three and it comes up short. Here comes Michael Weathers. Not all. Spots up. That's the shot you want, and that's the person that you want taking the shot. Zach Nuttall, former Southland Player of the Year, just he hasn't been able to consistently been that offensive threat for the Mustangs throughout the season. But he's a guy that can put up buckets and manufacture points quickly. Forwards reached in on Michael Weathers called for the foul. But what kind of opportunity is this for Tulane, meanwhile, as they try to build momentum toward Fort Worth? Yeah, Tulane is is again trying to win basketball games and and again with their playmaker Jalen Cook out most likely he's going to be available for the American Athletic Conference tournament and so you're looking at then you're going to have your full complement of players in a team that has three of the top ten scores in the American Athletic Conference and that's a team that no one is going to want to see come turn the time. Saw how hot they got in the first half as Forbes comes up short. Kendrick Davis has Forbes on skates. Zurich Phelps out to Vandermel. Rips it out. Still out rebounding SMU by three this afternoon and a moving screen called against the Green Wave. When you have playmakers like Jaden Coleman that you're trying to create space for, you have to allow Coleman to come to the screen. Don't move. Don't allow the officials to make that call. Stay stationary. Allow Coleman to drive his man into the screen. It's only the first foul on Kevin Cross, but Cross has just been a little bit off today. 0-5 from the floor. He does have four rebounds, three assists. Skip out to Bandamel. He'll take it. And it. John, you know what I love about that last possession? Vandermeer just missed his last three, had the confidence to hoist another one, but more importantly, his team had the confidence in him to kick it out to him. Cross going right back up for the bucket, his first of the day. Cross, a transfer from Nebraska, just wanted that basketball more. And that's what Tulane got in the first half, which allowed them to get the early lead. They got and wanted those 50 50 balls more. Phys physicality wise, the Mustangs have to meet that intensity. Davis unable to deliver on the three, and Cross once more. And that was a tough shot for Davis. You look at his last. Three games. He's only been shooting two for 15 from the three-point line. Really struggling for distance. Early in the season, he was so consistent from outside the arc. But yeah, here in late in conference play, and maybe it had something to do with the ankle. I'm not sure. He had that ankle injury. No, I mean it has a lot to do with shot selection. If, if you look at that last shot that Kendrick Davis took, pump fake, difficult shot with the player going by him, kick it. Step into your shot, let your shoulders be squared, but you don't want to shoot a high degree of difficulty type of three pointer when you're already struggling from the three point line. Last foul was the second on Marcus Weathers. His brother Michael has three and is on the bench at this point. Marcus getting a rest as Tristan Clark re enters. I don't think people understand how difficult it is for a guy like Marcus Weathers at 6'5 to play the center for the Mustangs throughout this American Athletic Conference season. That takes a toll on your body, and, and Marcus Weathers has really shown nowhere or tear throughout the season. 
SMU just absolutely calling for the travel here on Kevin Cross that he was just out of control but instead it goes as a body foul on Tristan Clark. Well Kevin Cross is a player that you want to get to his left and make him dribble with his left because usually he's out of control but that's the play that it looked like Kevin Cross was a little bit out of control tripped on himself and very fortunate for the bailout call by the official Get reached with that left arm and now here's a travel on him John little alongside Stephen Howard SMU trailed at the break by seven they lead it by two once trailed by 11 in this one one thing that the Mustangs have shored up in the second half that allowed them to get the lead is defensively they're more intent they're decisive and they are resolute Offensively when they execute their plays. Marcus Weathers takes forwards to the elbow and comes up short. Tulane only one of their last ten from the field. They were shooting 51% at the break. SMU outscoring Tulane 14 to 5 since the half. James poked away. Here comes Sir Phelps. Davis slashing. And they'll call the foul on the floor. Good recognition by Zerk Phelps in transition. Had the opportunity to penetrate. Saw Kendrick Davis on the wing open. Able to get him the basketball. And then Kendrick Davis did the rest. Had Tulane bite on the pump fake, attack the rim, great contact. Foul on Kevin Cross, and probably a good one. It's Kendrick Davis is on his way to the bucket. Davis playing in his last home game for SMU. He was honored before the contest. Slipped inside. Weathers has it poked away. Clark after it. Davis in the corner. Remember, we just talked about the shooting percentage of Kendrick Davis and why it had gone down. And I said a lot of times that has to do with shot selection, and that's a great example. Kendrick Davis wide open, set, foot set, waited for the ball to come to him and took it. Low degree of difficulty. Those are the type of shots that Kendrick Davis needs to take and make in a good offensive execution on the other end of the court with Tulane. Works curling one home. SMU is knocked down 11-3. Zurich Phelps over the top. Well, John, that's one thing that you're going to get when you play against Tulane because of their matchup zone. It allows that baseline three-point shot to be available if you work the basketball around for it. Baker way short. Bandon will to change the shot. And here comes SMU. Zurich Phelps. Contact. And there's the call. It goes on to Lane and a couple free throws for Phelps. And I like that possession a lot better for Zur Phelps. Instead of settling for the jump shot where you're only shooting 26% on the season, you attack the rim, use your athleticism and strength to create something positive for your team. 6-3 freshman. Played at Duncanville High, just south of Dallas. If he was a stock, I'd buy. That's what Tim Jankovic says. He's going to have a great future here at SMU. Phelps, Mr. Basketball in the state of Texas last year. RJ McGee comes out. only four of nine from the foul line in this one. They're normally a high volume free throw shooting team as Tulane player Kevin Cross slips. I guess there was some uh, moisture underneath the goal. That squeegee out, put it to work. Looking a little better now. SME has come back five times at home this season to win when trailing by double digits and they're trying to do it for a sixth time. I mean they've been dominant at home here lately. They've got 17 straight home wins but it's not without 
with some adversity from time to time that they've been able to overcome. Well, once you get to conference play, it's always difficult to win. And the better teams are ones that are able to hold their home court, and the Mustangs have been able to do that this season. Davis thought about the three. SMU in the midst of a big run since the half, 18 to 7. Phelps trying to build on it. He gets blocked. Goes right out to Marcus Weber. Still nine to shoot. Nice tap out by Tristan Clark to extend this offensive possession. Deep triple. Big rebound for Kevin Cross, who continues to play hard in the second half. That's his eighth rebound. And off on the weave to Baker. Silky smooth. Tristan Clark needs to extend the defense on that pick. Allowing Baker to shoot unencumbered. And the free throw line extended. A tight one here in Dallas. It's going to go down to the wire. Not all thinks about it. Brings it anyway. Maybe that busts a drought for Zach Nuttall. That's the offensive output that they need from Zach Nuttall. Again, one of the more prolific scores last season for the Southern Conference. And just waiting for that seal to break on the rim while he has that Mustang jersey on. Kentley Dallas attacking and fouled inside the lane. Baker was the one to reach in for his first foul. I say it was on the floor. Davis, one of the foul shots, is not going to get him. Kendrick Davis so crafty in creating scoring opportunities, particularly when he's in transition. That's why you have to defend him early, stop him from going north to south. You want to make him an east to west type of player because when he's going downhill, very difficult to keep him out of the lane. Makes a lot of the right decisions. Coach Jankovic says he's so much more relaxed this season. He's got confidence in his teammates, and it's built over the course of the year as this new look team came together. Moves the transfer of Marcus Weathers. Bandamel from the head of the key. James trying to keep Tulane in it. Forbes pushes it in, up, but no, and on the pogo stick, Sion James taps it in. Saw the strength and athleticism of Sion James on that last possession at 6-5, able to get the quick jump, go over the defense for the second chance for an opportunity. And in this game, Tulane leads SMU 8-5 with the offensive rebound, and Tulane, the worst rebounding team in the American, not showing that today against the Mustangs. Davis, look at the head fakes, the step back, this is a three, off the mark. Again, a different shot when he allows the offense to come to him and doesn't force the issue from the three-point line. That goes a lot into shooting a poor percentage. Baker couldn't hit it. Marcus Weathers spinning in, no call, grabs his own. Oh, what a tough finish. And Tulane standing strong. Tough possession by Marcus Weathers, able to go up and get the second chance for an opportunity, not able to knock it down. The three for the tie is off by Forbes. Both teams looking a little tired down the stretch with a little under seven minutes left to go in the game. Good job by Kendrick Davis pulling the basketball up. Now you set the offense and try to get something set. Six feet tall, and he does it when the opponent could throw all kinds of things at him during the game. He is the focal point. Six feet. He, he grew a couple inches. Well, that, that's what they list him at this year. Scramble for it. James comes up with it. Here comes Forbes. Oh, Forbes. Out to Davis. And that's going to go. Wow, what a sequence. Again, Michael Weathers and the dynamic playmaking ability that he has on both sides of the court. You see two on one situation. Nice block, all ball. Has the foresight to see Kendrick Davis up ahead where Kendrick lays it up on the rim. Goaltending, easy call for the officials to make. But again, it all starts with the defense of Michael Weathers and the leak out. 
almost got another block there, but there's a foul inside instead, a blocking foul called against Kendrick Davis, and free throws upcoming. You have to do had another block, but he prevented the N1 scoring opportunity. And again, you got a guy, Michael Weathers, 6'3", the best rim protector that the Mustangs have. And he is top eight in the American Athletic Conference in blocks per game at one per eight. That is tremendous. Zion James going to the line, able to prevail. Colin Hercules built like a football player, played a little football up until his freshman year in high school where he tore his ACL and concentrated on basketball. He's got quite a build for a point guard. Yeah, he does. Call that a power guard. <laughs> or as some coaches would call it, a jumbo guard. Over two trips at the offensive rebound for Forbes. Green Wave trying to stay alive in Dallas. Marcus Weathers has his seventh double-double of the season to lead the American. Again, Marcus Weathers and his ability to shore up the interior. Oh, no! You did it! Yesterday's price is not today's price. Michael Weathers. Wow. A settling point, and you had... Kentucky first, Arkansas second, Florida third, and SMU had the fourth best transfer portal signings with players that totaled 3,733 points. And you can see with the evolution of the way that they have meshed together, they're playing. This is what they came here for, and they're playing for the opportunity to go to the big dance. So great job by the coach bringing them in, but ultimately Coach Jankovic had to bring them together, and they've done a great job of playing that selfless, Mustang basketball. Well, early in the season, there were times where they kind of looked like mismatched parts, and, and not anymore. Everybody knows their role. They went from the island of misfit toys to <laughs> a well-oiled machine. Emmanuel Vandemel is no Charlie in the box. I see what you did there. Sean James brings in the rebound. But a chance for Tulane here. The green wave that withstood Run after run, five-point game. Green Wave has stepped or stayed in this game without Jaden Coleman really doing anything in this second half, and they're doing it by executing offensively like they did in that last possession. Being patient, allowing your cutters to attack the rim, and then hitting the open player and allowing them to go work. Kevin Cross may be the best big man passer in the league. He racks up his sixth assist. Weathers slithers inside. Tough finish, doesn't fall, and another big board for Cross. Another play with a high degree of difficulty. Last possession by Michael Weathers. Allow your offense a little bit longer. Let it work for you. Letting it get out of control. SMU's 17 game home winning streak is on the line. It's the sixth longest in the country. See, putting their full court trap on there, trying to, again, affect the continuity of the Mustangs' offense. Senior day for SMU. Michael Weathers. Great elevation. Can't make it go. Kept alive by his brother, Marcus for two. John, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, and let your twin brother try again. And again, the relentlessness of the Weathers brothers just continuing those physicality-type plays. Another offensive foul on Jalen Forbes as Kendrick Davis stands in. Physicality on this play with the Mustangs. Going up high, Michael Weathers can't get it. His twin brother, I got your back, brother. SMU up five. A little under four left to go in the game. Jaden Coleman and Tulane getting a sense of why SMU is so tough to play at home. They just make winning plays, and the Mustangs up by five late. Well, John, it's important that Jaden Coleman is in, and you're going to need to have recognition by the Mustangs to understand that Coleman is in the game. You've got to face guard him at all times, and you don't want him to get hot, particularly from the three-point line, because he is the type of player that is the 
break glass in need of offensive emergency. Tulane has an offensive emergency, and he is the guy that could get them back in the game very quickly with his ability to make buckets from the perimeter. Bowman has 17 points to match a career high, but he hasn't scored in the second half. We hadn't really played a lot in the second half, only with 19 minutes throughout this game, and for some reason, Coach Hunter did not feel the necessity to have him in the game during this last stretch. Payton DeMille for three. That's the bottom out. John, that was a beautifully executed play. Ball movement side to side. I think the basketball hit all, if not all, at least four Mustang players, and you hit Vandermill on the corner, which is open in that matchup zone. He only averaged 2.6 points per game last season. Here he is in the second half, 19 points. He's one of the better defenders in the country. Moody, ready to see this team erupt. to see him get it inside to Marcus Weathers and let him attack. Here he goes. The senior can't finish. Michael Weathers keeps it alive, but out to Devon Baker and Tulane down by two threes. Good job by Tulane walling up against Marcus Weathers, not allowing him to get unhindered to the rim, preventing an easy bucket on the interior. Tulane calls one of their two timeouts. They've got the always demonstrative Ron Hunter, he just keeps shedding clothes as the game goes on. And what they did is they're putting in Jaden Coleman. What they're doing is they're playing him offense to defense. Defensively, they're taking him out and putting in a defensive player. Now their offense, they're going to put him in and probably design something to put the ball into either Jaden Coleman's hands or Jalen Forbes' hands and let them create offensively. Yeah, you got to get your best offensive player of the game back in there. The, uh, American Athletic Conference Basketball Championship just about 30 miles down the road at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. All the games on the ESPN family of networks. Tulane knows they're going to play Temple in the second day of the tournament. SMU will play on the second day as well in the quarterfinals. Can't say enough. Two of the three seeds. Can't say enough, John, how important it is to have a bye that both these teams have. It allows you to Sit back, watch how the tournament is progressing, progressing, but more importantly, down the stretch, you get one extra day of rest. James inside, and not all called for the foul. And for SMU, they are over the limit, uh, whether this is a shooting foul or not. Sion James able to back his way to the bucket for two shots. Sion James gets it into his left. Once he gets his head down, he uses his strength to attack the rim, play through contact. And again, you put the basketball into your playmaker's hands. And Sion James, throughout the season, has shown his ability to embrace and take big shots in big moments. Second year freshman out of Sugar Hill, Georgia, Lanier High School, where he was All State and Co 6A Player of the Year in 2020. James makes it a four-point game. Tulane just needs to play solid D on this. Contest all shots and secure the or get a steal. That's a big steal by RJ McGee. James back to fours. Mid-range shot goes down, two-point game. John, that's what you call shot credibility. Jalen Forbes nearly pump fake. Mike Wortonly, 13 of 29 from distance. The spread is only two in favor of the Mustangs as they look for number 18 consecutive win at home. Bandamel comes up short. Forbes has the rebound with a buck 20. John, the shot was open, but on that possession, I would love a little bit more probing. A little bit more attack guard and be there on the catch if they get the basketball. Tulane on a 6 0 run. They've hit their last four shots. Forbes nearly lost it. Good defense by Michael Weathers. He was there on the catch. Coleman open. Can't grab the lead. Bandamel the big rebound and hacked. 
John, that's the shot they wanted. Coleman had space. I mean, that's a good shot for Jaden Coleman. That's a shot he made in the first half. He had space. There was a contest by SMU, but he had plenty of room. Well executed, good offense, good defense, and SMU fortunate to come up with the huge re rebound by Emmanuel Vandermeer. Jaden Coleman, the career high 19, but not able to hit the go ahead shot. Now, here's a one and one. Vandermeer's been big today. Ooh, just sneaks over. Emmanuel Vandermeer played here at SMU. After being at Hill College, shooting 79% from the free throw line, and you could tell he had a lot of knowledge of these rims. Take two lanes, stay in it. They're out of timeouts. They don't have to go for a three. You got plenty of time. Get the best shot available. Baker pulling up, comes up short. That is go for the steal. But for the Mustangs, you want to get the basketball in your best free throw shooting. Michael Weathers gets leaned on across midcourt. Two free throws on the way as Devon Baker picks up his second foul. Now what's going to be important for Tulane is to get the ball up court quickly and you don't have to necessarily take a three but take the best shot available. Trying to do everything you can to extend the game and make it tough on SMU, looking for their 18th straight home victory. The hard part for SMU at times when you have the lead, you don't want to foul. Sometimes you don't defend the way you normally do, and you allow an easy, quick bucket, and you do, don't want to do that. You want to play defense, you want to play aggressive defense, and make it difficult for Tulane to execute. SMU has 18 fouls. Michael Weathers. 79% at the line this season, 15 points on his senior day. Two for two. Don't allow Tulane to roll the ball up the court. James looking for something quick. Forbes lost it. Coleman comes up with it, has Vandemel in the air. It's way off, and Davis comes down with it. Davis wasn't fouled, and he seals it. It's a lapse of communication defensively by Tulane, allowing Kendrick Davis to get ahead of the defense. And that was basically the nail in the coffin, as they say. Cross drops it in. Tulane can't stop it. This was a hard fought punker behind. Big win for SMU. Much needed, as we've talked about throughout this game having to keep themselves in that conversation for the NCAA tournament and coming up with a huge win. Now, American...